What's going on, guys? We are here with the three mentors of the syndicate. We have Bruce, Chris, and Gabriel with us. And today, um, I'm going to talk about getting accepted by music libraries. It's a question, actually, that's been popping up more and more in the last couple of weeks. Obviously, you guys know uh, I'm offering a new program, a new service called Sync Edge, where I'm basically giving out specific music library recommendations based on a particular genre. And because this new service is being rolled out, it's obviously attracting a lot of attention to a lot of producers, uh, songwriters, uh, and musicians in general that really want to know how, what's the trick to getting accepted by music libraries. Maybe many of you have already submitted to a lot of them and gotten either rejection notices or just got ignored. I know that I certainly have gotten those kind of uh, notices. Um, and I'm sure these three here that are going to talk to us have faced some sort of rejection in their own way. But all three of them have been accepted into music libraries outside of the syndicate. They've, they're actually out there building relationships, building their catalog in the real world in the music licensing industry. And just to give you guys a recap on my personal approach, now this is the general approach. I can't be specific to any given library in this video. That's what I do in the Sync Edge. But for this one, all I can say is that you have to get out of your own, sort of our own narcissistic tendencies as producers, as musicians about what's in it for me, what's in, what can I get out of this relationship? And you literally have to focus probably 90% of your pitch on what's in it for them. And the only way to do that is you got to know how to analyze a music library. You got to know what's going on in their catalog. You got to understand who their clients are, what kind of clients, what kind of programming do they pitch to? What kind of music do they really need? Or do, what's your best guess as to what kind of music they could potentially need? Once you have that down, then your pitch kind of writes itself because basically what you're doing is you're walking up to somebody going, I've noticed you might need this. Can I offer you this service? And if you're close, or even if you're not even right on the mark, the fact that you're approaching somebody considering what they really want and you're not coming to the table going, what can I get? What are you gonna give me? I need this and I have great music and you're kind of keeping it more focused on yourself. The fact that you're just focusing on them and their needs makes them really wanna work with you and really get involved um, with you long-term because they understand that you have the right mindset. So what I want our three mentors today to just go through is share a little bit of their experiences about submitting to libraries for the first time. Maybe if you guys could share some of your rejections or being ignored and how that felt, but then also your successes. What was it do you think that really made the difference for you when you submitted your tracks to some of these libraries and got that acceptance letter? Did you get any feedback from them? Um, do you have any you know sort of guesses as to why you think that your pitch got accepted to their catalogs? And uh, Bruce, we'll start with you first. Yeah, sure. So uh, first, let me tell you guys what not to do, because I did um, something that I basically learned from, and I think it's a good experience for you guys, too. So, uh, basically, Jesse, I, I didn't know about this side of the industry before uh, I saw Jesse's ads and, and joined the syndicate. So I had never submitted anything uh, before that. Um, but when I got the submission, um, the, the email with the guideline template of how to approach them, and when I felt I was kind of up to par with my producing skills, I went ahead and I reached out. Now, I made a demo of a bunch of different genres of music that I produced. And against Jesse's advice, I spammed like seven different libraries. And guess what? I got ignored. <laughs> all, all seven. No, nobody got back to me. And I sent a follow-up email, actually, um, about two and a half weeks later. And still nothing. So I said, okay, this is not going to work this way. So I kind of had to dig down and do a little more homework. So I, just as Jesse said, so I went in and I saw what types of clients these guys were serving. Um, what music do they have a lot of? What don't they have a lot of? What hole can I fill with them? And um, basically there's this one library that I saw. I like hip hop and I make a lot of hip hop. That's what I enjoy uh, most. And I saw this one library that had a lot of orchestral stuff um, and kind of hybrid orchestral stuff and rock and, and indie pop, which I'm, I also like to do indie pop. And I feel like that's one of my strengths as well. Um, but they didn't have a lot of hip hop at all. And, and the hip hop that they had was kind of corny. And so I was like, okay, you know, I think I can, I think these, these guys will be a good match. And, um, so I basically made a demo tailored to them following their, uh, guidelines. I believe it was an MP3. They didn't want a SoundCloud link or any Dropbox because he wanted to just click and play right away. He didn't want to have to go somewhere else. Um, so I believe I compiled the demo and I bounced it as an MP3 and I just attached it right to the email because that was the way that they wanted it to be sent. And um, just with a short, maybe two paragraph long uh, little thing based on uh, Jesse's guideline template of how to uh, 
reach out to them. And basically, it wasn't about me I was saying, hey, I noticed that you you guys have this type of music. I can offer this type of music. This is what I do uh, mainly. I also do, um, you know, these types of genres. And uh, I love I love to uh, I love to work with you. I feel like we can we can have a great partnership. And I actually heard back from them. I don't remember when this was. This was at the beginning of the year, but I think it was about two days later or something. It was pretty right away um, that I heard back from them. And uh, basically, they, they offered me a contract, a uh, five-year contract. And I, you know, I read through the whole thing. I didn't just sign my life away, right? I read through the whole thing, and uh, this is what I was getting myself into. I asked them a couple questions about you know, about some things that were a little unclear to me. And uh, basically now we work together and, and they send me some custom stuff and I send them my music and it's just a back and forth. Um, so I, I think basically what I, in, in a nutshell, what I learned is that um, I, I tailored my pitch specifically to them and that exact email would not have worked with anybody else because it was for their, uh, it was for that library, for their music, for their needs. And I was saying, hey, I can help you get, um, I can help you get to this, uh, to, to fill this hole that you don't have, and you can see me as as the hole filler, basically. So um, I think that's what I think that's what attracted them to me and offered and, and offered me a contract. That's why. Yeah, it's powerful stuff there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's usually how it is in this business, guys. If you send something that's undeniable and really well crafted, you'll you'll hear back from people within a couple of days. Usually, uh, for all the libraries that I've reached out to, I usually hear back something within like like his experience. 48 hours, maybe a week at the most. But if they like you, if they like your pitch, they're going to jump on top of you real quick. They're going to call you back. They're going to want to get you on the phone. They're going to want to get you signed up as soon as possible. And, you know, going back to this idea of spamming people, remember, these are human beings that work at music libraries. They're not like, you know, alien figures that have no feelings. So do you guys like getting spammed? Nobody likes getting spammed, right? Um, I get tons of spam from producers sending me their music and sending 3000 other people cc'd i just spam it i just spam don't want to listen to it don't care not interested because it's very disrespectful to somebody to say like you're not really interested in talking to me you're just interested in yourself and you're trying to just spam as many people as possible and hoping something sticks it doesn't make the person on the other end of that receiving that email feel very important or special this is an ego driven world so you got to remember just like Bruce was saying, when you take that care and consideration and you're saying, hey, I really want to partner with you specifically, it's literally like asking somebody out specifically on a date. Like you can't just use the same line with everybody because it gets generic and nobody's going to fall for it, right? You've got to have something very specific and unique to who you're submitting your music to so they know, okay, this person really wants to work with us. Like they're not just sending it out to everybody. And another pro tip I'll give you guys, and it's how I've really gotten myself, uh, I think, accepted more often than not is I usually include some sort of a line that says, you are my number one pick for a music library that I like to partner with first. You're the one that I had in mind when I put this music together. You're the library that I've really been wanting to partner with. So I'm giving you guys the right of first refusal, essentially. If you guys don't, I always put that in there. If you guys are not interested in this music, it's not you know what you guys need, I will probably find another music library to work with. So it's not a threat to say, oh, you better sign me or else. But it shows confidence. It shows that like you're not the only game in town, and I will take this elsewhere. But it also shows that there's some forethought into this. That I really want to partner with you. There's something about your library and your clients and how you're doing it, and the music that I make that I think we'd be a great marriage. We'd be a great partnership. So that's a really powerful thing to put in there, so that they know that you're not spamming that to everybody. You're not just throwing you know copy and paste uh, all over the place. It's really important to do that. All right. Well, thank you, Bruce and Chris. Why don't you go ahead and share with us some of your experiences? Uh, yeah, so before I joined Syndicate, I just didn't know anything about this business. So I tried, like, I spent a lot of time just like learning it, like how, how I do this and how I do that. And I had like some knowledge about like, you know, MIDI and making music, like, you know, in your like home studio and stuff, but I just didn't know anything else. Like just like how to mix, I, my track just sounded horrible. I recently found like one track that that I made like six seven years ago, and I just like couldn't hear like more than twenty seconds. That is <laughs> that is rough. Um, <laughs> but the, but the thing is, well, like back then I thought that was pretty awesome, and I like send out to my friends and like teachers and stuff. And that same thing actually happened when I started working on this. So three months after I joined Syndicate, I first 
like first I submitted to like two, three libraries. And I thought that track was just amazing. I made this like huge, like amazing, that's what I thought, like orchestral trailer music, which no one like, you know, which you cannot put that in any kind of TV shows or actual movie trailer or anything. Cause that music itself was like one. So you don't want to feel the entire one. So like it should be like you know there should be a scene there should be a dialogue and there should be something else but like music tells the whole thing so there's no place to like put anything else as a you know director or a producer of the film or TV or you know those people and I thought I was like I was wondering like I don't know why I'm not getting accepted to this library and back then I just didn't do enough research. So I just like picked random names from the list of music libraries. I'm like, you might need this. And I just sent them. So that has failed. So I went back and I, um, every time Jesse had like, Jesse posted this, you know, opportunity for like, you know, open review. I just like posted everything so I could get the review. And I, um, I noticed that I had same issue every time. Like my low end was too weak or like, you know, so, something wrong in my mix, but that was like consistent. So, but like in my like monitoring setup, like that sounded really good to me. So I was like, maybe probably this is wrong. And cause, cause I've been hearing like same thing from other people too. So I try to like really train my ear to have that, you know, sound. So I kind of like, if I, listen to something on my monitoring setup now i know that i know that uh, this should be actually a little bit louder than what i'm hearing and something like that so you're learning stuff yeah. so after that i didn't want to make like same mistake make mistakes again so i picked one library and i went through like a lot of music what they what you know, what they have and what they need and what kind of like mix and what kind of sound they like usually go for. So I feel like some libraries, they have like this, you know, people who actually get your stamps and like mix again for their library. And some people just like post their music like on their, like, you know, what is that sound source or something? Mm -hmm. Their website, website. So you just need to know like what kind of sound they want and also like what kind of music they need. So that's why I, you know, I, I listen to a lot of music for this one library and just like try to make like similar sound uh, with that. And like also like in a similar style of music. So, and also I'm kind of like, I'm an orchestral music guy. So, but you know, orchestral, back then I was thinking like the only thing I can do was trailer music, but actually you can also do like, you know, the video I posted a few weeks ago, like, you know, piano underscore music, you can do that. And you can also do drama tension music. And also Jesse gave me like a really cool idea, like orchestral, like future based kind of stuff. So I'm kind of working on it right now. Um, so you can do a lot of stuff with like, you know, one specific, specific genre that you're good at. So like, you know, Sometimes it's good to just like branch out to different genres, but like, you know, it's really hard to be really good at like everything. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I've been trying to do. And of course I got some like, you know, rejection emails, like, you know, they don't need this email. And some people literally told me like, that is like for when I first started, like he was like, you're not ready. <laughs> so that was really harsh. <laughs> And some people literally told me that, and I really appreciate it actually, because not, because that was the point that I was like stop applying, and I started like learning something new. Um, so after that, um, I thought I had like really good sound, so I had like this a few tracks that I you know, and I submitted to like a few other libraries, and then, um. I think I posted on Syndicate before, but one crazy thing was like I, I I applied like back in February, and I got accepted in May. So mm. one person had to go through all the submissions and finally got back to me after three months. So sometimes that happens too. So you know, in this business, if you like making music and if you want to do this like for a living, eventually, 
like you have to be consistent and you all you always have to be like open minded and you have to work hard like always so you, you're not going to just like do try this for a month or a year and quit so sometimes it happens when you you know you just do that and do this and sometimes it happens and someone gets back to you and if you are working hard and if you work consistently and you know at the time by the time that that person gets back to me back to you like you have like more tracks and you are you have more skills and abilities to do like anything else so that's what i really wanted to say and so now i'm when i apply for something i always have like at least 10 tracks so they if they if someone asks me i can just like give it to them like just full album that's really easy but before you get to that point i really want to say like you have to make sure that you have the right sound you have the right skill otherwise that 10 tracks you have to go back to the first one and have to fix everything so it's kind of hard to say like when is that point but like if you keep you know working hard and like just you know getting like lots of like you know comments and reviews of your tracks and you'll at some point you'll know that you're ready and you know that you have the right sound and that's when like you know you just make tracks constantly and like you know make like whole album and it's going to be easier to like just you know pitch like different libraries and stuff yeah absolutely and that's a really powerful point um two things i wanted to cover with that one you said that you know you were getting just direct like you're not ready response which yes is harsh and it's hard to take that but they were telling you the truth they were saying you know where your track is right now and where your production skills and mixing and mastering skills whatever it is that they had an issue with they're just letting you know you know what not quite but you got to also realize that it's a very subjective industry so what might not be ready for this particular library might be great for b for the next library right so that's the second point I want to touch on is if you know how to know if you're really ready to go. 95% of producers, I think, are submitting well before they're ready to be submitting. I think they're just sending tracks because you know their friends or family told them like I could hear this on TV and then they just send it out there. Um, but there's really no sort of consideration. And just what Chris was saying was he became like an avid uh you know student of the library's catalog. He was listening to all the music, he was studying the mix, he was comparing it his mix, their mix, back and forth, back and forth, on and on and on and on, till he started noticing that, you know, where his tracks were and theirs were, that gap started closing. And that doesn't happen overnight. It's not like you just have to click one button on your compressor and, oh, there you go. It's a small process. You know, you have to sort of learn how to compose differently. Maybe you have to learn how to mix differently, set up your sessions differently. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you got to do to get that gap to close a little bit. But if you want to know when is your track ready to go? Well, you have to be brutally honest with yourself and you have to listen to the, the li library's catalog that you're listening that you want to submit to and really just level with yourself. Am I really on par or better than their music, what they have? So, and don't, you know, compare your EDM to their orchestral, compare your EDM music to their EDM music. And if you can honestly say, yeah, you know what? I'm right where they are. In fact, their sounds a little bit dated. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing as I'm going through some of these catalogs for the Sync Edge program is there's a lot of outdated music in a lot of these libraries because every four or five years, the sound kind of, you know, recycles out a little bit. And a lot of these, you know, catalogs have this music that's in there, but you listen to it, you're like, that kind of sounds like 2005 or even 1995. And so a lot of these libraries are in desperate need of modernizing their catalogs. And so if your tracks can do that for them, then you really get to cut the corner essentially and go right in front. Um, to get accepted to these kind of companies. So really powerful concepts there that you share with us, ma'am. And uh, lastly, let's get with um, uh, Gabriel here. Uh, so I think my story is pretty similar to Bruce's story. And uh, like I had a bunch of libraries that I sent sent out demos to uh, with like all kinds of tracks I've done because the more the better, right? <laughs> like just spreading, spreading it out there. So. Uh, like nobody re responded really. Um, get, got like one mild response, but yeah, maybe I'll use this track. But then later on, they they didn't want it anyway. So I started like thinking what I should do to get some more attention. Like started like thinking about that and um, came to the con con conclusion like that I should. Uh, try and make something kind of special sounding like my own style making my music the only music 
like it shows it sounds like just like me. So I made like four tracks and sent sent it out to a library, and uh, they responded pretty much immediately because uh, they and I want to make an album. So that's kind of where it got started for me. Uh, so I think that's kind of where my pitch got a lot more powerful because I have a, had a thought with my music, like, and an identity uh, also. Um, the only thing that like worries me right now is they are almost too positive to my music. I haven't got any any notes or anything like that because I've gotten so used to like sending out music to your opportunities. You always have have notes or something, even though you love love the tracks. So not sure if I'm just being like pessimistic or if I if they actually genuinely like the music. So that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, and usually uh, that's gonna be something that, um, I also don't get a lot of notes either from my music libraries. In the beginning I do usually because they, they have a specific way they want things like tailored, especially it's more notes on like, all right, like when we do library X stuff, it's like your 60s, your 30s, your 15s, your stings, they gotta be a certain type, right? Yeah. Um, and they're very, that's like probably the most specific library I've ever worked with. Other, other libraries either say, hey, just give us the stems or just give us the drum and bass and no leads version, like they're a little bit more looser with it. Um, but you know, different libraries will have the different notes. But as you submit more and more, you kind of get into the sync of it. You kind of know what they want. You can anticipate how it works. And if they're not giving you a lot of notes, that's not not a bad thing at all. It's actually normally a great sign because you're giving them exactly what they want. And they're not likely just going to accept music just to throw it in their catalog. If they really don't think they're going to get a place, they're not going to yeah, deal yeah. with the paperwork and payments and uh, licensing and metadata. I mean, there's a lot of work that has to go into getting more music to be uploaded and registered with PROs. So they're not usually going to be just placating people um, just to have music in there. Now, if you have something like a non-exclusive library that's just sort of accepting whatever, like they might have a little bit more looser, but that's usually when they, usually you'll, you'll know if that's the case if, it's kind of a self uploading process where they're like, Hey, just upload your music here and just throw it in there. If you're doing a lot of that on your own, it's hard to tell how much of that they actually go. Yes, we like this. We want to do it. But if you're literally directly emailing, you know, your libraries or people that you're working with are sending them your tracks and they're manually taking those and putting them into your system, they're not going to be placating you at all with that because that takes time and effort. And you know, people are lazy. They don't want to do work if they don't have to. So um, I'm always just kind of a stickler with, my submissions because part of the service you guys get with a syndicate is feedback. So even though it could be perfectly licensable, I want to give you something, right? I do want to make sure that there's something you can learn, maybe something you can improve, something that just rubbed me a little bit the wrong way or that you can sort of embellish upon because that's, you know, it's a little bit different here in the syndicate as opposed to when it's a, you know, submitting directly to a library. Um, if it works for them, you know, trust their word. They're, they're telling you right off the bat, like, yes, we love it. So that's usually a great sign. So um, thank you guys. I really appreciate you sharing your stories today. I know everybody watching today also will. And, you know, the main reason, just so everybody's watching, like, why did I have these guys on today to talk about this? You know, I think a lot of people who get started in the music licensing business think of getting accepted by a music library as this incredible dream record deal, incredible thing that happens to your life. And in many ways, it is very exciting. And your first acceptance letter and first email is just like puts you through the moon. You guys, you three obviously can attest to that. But it's actually not that special and it's not that unique. It's actually fairly common to get accepted by music libraries in the music licensing business. And the reason why is because they constantly need new music. They need new talent. They need new writers, new producers. That's what they're in the business of doing is actively building a really solid team. Now they're very selective. Doesn't mean they just accept everybody. They are very selective and they probably say no to 95, 99% of the people that submit to them. But they are looking, right? So they are the ones that are actually looking for those unsolicited demos, those unsolicited uh, track submissions. Record labels, not necessarily so, okay? They are in the business of finding new talent, developing new talent and all that good stuff. But they are not necessarily, they're looking for something in addition to marketable music, they need an image. They need you to be young. They need you to have a certain look. They need you to, right? There's a lot of things that you have to have to be involved in the record business. Music licensing, you think they cared what I look like, what these guys look like? They don't care about any of that. Like, are we marketable as art? Nobody cares. Now, some libraries will want you to send a picture because they want to build like a team, sort of like, hey, we're a team here. We're not just sort of a group of random producers and writers all working for one company. Um, and so that's really cool and fun, but it's not really about marketing you. It's not trying to make you some sort of a like, you know, sexy young, you know, package to sell 
to consumers. Like that's completely not a part of any of this business. It's really just about licensable music and having that really solid pitch. So if that really resonates with you and that's really what you want to get involved with, this is the, this is the business. You're in the right business. You're definitely submitting to the right kind of companies. But I hope you guys take this video and advice you're getting here to know how to do it the right way or to at least stop if you're doing it and getting no good responses or you know rejection letters or getting, getting ignored stop just stop what you're doing because you're probably doing something wrong either you're submitting before you're ready to or you're submitting the wrong submissions or the wrong kinds of music there could be a whole host of issues that are going on so uh, myself and here are the mentors we're going to try to help do everything we can to give you guys feedback give you guys that guidance on what worked for us what doesn't work and obviously you guys can see just in this short little interview there's some common threads here, right? So if you didn't catch them, go back and watch this again. There's there's like a lot of wisdom that actually came out right here. And uh, if you're not paying attention to what we're really saying, you're gonna miss out on some great um, tips that are gonna basically get you accepted by music libraries.